Thank you, Father, for this day, and thank you, Lord, that we are able to come together today. Thank you that you protected Caleb on his travels to BC and back. And Lord, we thank you that this book is going to be setting a good foundation for the group and for the series, Lord. And hopefully that we will be able to retain and apply everything that we are learning throughout these chapters. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, as usual, what do you guys think of this chapter? I think it sets some pretty good pretty good basics for uh, for marriage. Yeah, uh, good foundations. Yeah, yeah. Especially the whole, like, the whole selfless love. You know, are you willing to sacrifice your time, your hobbies? Is, you know, are you willing to forego going out with your friends and stuff yeah. like that to spend time with your wife if something happens or you know things like that ask some some good questions that some people might have a hard time with especially like are you willing to forego like a, a boy's night yeah to stay home with your wife because she asked you to or because something happened and she wants you to stay home yeah i think though part of that comes from just because we have lost what we would consider the discipline of marriage nowadays you know i mean you look at society and most people would say marriage isn't really that important i mean it's basically the same thing as just living with your partner right but in reality it's a lot deeper it is such a a deep and profound connection with another person that that you know some of these the things talked about in this chapter about you know communication and sacrifice and stuff like that it's going to be lost a lot on a lot of people and it'll ruffle some feathers because most people don't want to live like that for anyone other than themselves and that's i think part of why the institution of marriage is becoming sidelined you know it's people are using this excuse of oh there's no real difference but in reality is there's such a vast difference that most people are afraid of that level of commitment yeah and just more to that point it's not even like i know the pastors and everything now for marriages they still say the whole to till death do us part thing but in all reality they should change it they should change it until i get bored because nobody's wanting to put in the effort anymore in, t in today's society it's not marriage isn't looked at as a holy thing it's not looked at as a lifelong thing like sure they'll say it but in reality what they really mean is yeah i'll be with you and till I get fed up, till it gets hard, till it gets complicated, till I have to put an effort. Like, I remember a few months ago, I was praying and I actually made a Facebook post on this on the Men After God Facebook page. Because I was, I was asking God, I was like, Lord, help me to be, like, help me to be a man of the Bible. Help me to be a husband of the Bible. And he brought me to Ephesians 5 verses, basically the verses of this chapter where it's basically Ephesians 5 chapters 20 or verses 22 to 30 and so when I reread this it was a really good reminder because these verses really resonated with me because a few months ago when I was studying this um, the Lord brought me to them and that's where I came up with that that post so to see them again it was reassuring that it was from God like he brought me there because I mean really and truly the, those verses they do outline what it is to be a biblical husband and yeah you do have to sacrifice you have to sacrifice yourself for your wife like jesus did for his church how much are you willing to give up i think that's uh it reflects back on you know the very first chapter like the introduction even you know where it talks about uh commitment in general and, and discipline in general where you you're sacrificing things that you may want to do because there are more important things that you know and understand you need to do it's the same kind of concept just in a, a different dynamic you know where it's it's not something that should be new to a christian man you know to to have a sacrificial kind of love for somebody it's just that marriage takes it to a, a different level but i mean that's really how we should be living our lives in in general to to everybody we meet you know being willing to sacrifice our time and our resources to to help one another or to better ourselves you know to seek after god first and and deny ourselves and I, it definitely does apply and i think it's a very important in our lives to have that foundation with ourselves first you know before you can bring that into the dynamic of a marriage because if you can't do that for yourself you know realizing that these things are better for you how are you going to give up what you enjoy and what you like doing you know for the better of somebody else yeah but i think that also relates to um this section again where it's ephesians 5 and this is verse 28 
where it says, so husbands ought to love their own wives as if they love their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, right? And then the next one, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does his church. But that also kind of relates directly to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 4, which I just looked up on my, on my phone, so I could have already botched it. But essentially what it says is, Husbands, your flesh is not your own, but it's your wife's. And wives, your flesh is not your own. You belong to your husband. So it kind of relates to this. Like, I think they relate because if you love yourself and then if your wife's flesh doesn't belong to her but belongs to you and your flesh doesn't belong to you but belongs to her, then to love yourself is to love your spouse. Makes sense. Yeah, and you think about it. Like, there's, there's one thing, you know, when particularly in Ephesians, you know, when, when God calls us to love our, our wives as Christ loves his church, like even to the point of death, most guys would think... Yeah, I would die for my wife, you know, like, but but how often do you think about it the other way, like living for your lo- your wife, you know, your whole life? And, and if you think about the dynamic between the church through the course of history with God, you know, like unfaithful, lying, you know, just don't care, like, and still God loves them and keeps coming back and keeps calling back. And, you know, that kind of aspect of living for them is almost more intimidating than you know being willing to die for your wife right I mean, how many of you would you know you would probably have to stop and think if someone were to say would you stick around with your wife if she was constantly unfaithful or constantly lying or constantly hiding things or constantly dismissing what you say or not caring and you know if you spent the next 10 years without her paying you know paying any attention to you would you stick around that's uh it's a lot more difficult to do, in my opinion, because that's, again, with the society, we're in the point where we would be like, yeah, I've done what I can. I'm checking out, too, you know, it's but it's a lot more of a deeper call than that, because the way God loves his church, he's sticking around and he will forgive and forgive and forgive until we're finally united. Well, because it's unconditional love, right? Mm-hmm. Like. I know a lot of people who say they they love their spouses unconditionally, but then at the same time they always expect something in return. It's like, oh well, you got you got to go out. Now I get to go out. Well, that's not unconditional love. There's a condition. The condition is I did something, so you have to do something too. That's not unconditional love. And I think the people of today, and I think the church is guilty of this too, because nobody's really talking about it because it's it's a hard subject. It ruffles some feathers. But like Caleb mentioned on the last ep- like last week, the truth is harsh, and it has to be. So I don't know. I think God's trying to bring His people back to Him, back to His Word, and it's gonna ruffle some feathers. But I think that's what society needs. Yeah, I think sometimes it takes a hard spoken word in order to wake some people up. Yeah. Some people, for some people, it's it's they'll accept it if it's sugar-coated and i don't mean like you know, a lie or like a half truth but if it's like a heart if you're giving them the harsh reality of it and you're not you know you're not sugar-coating it it's a lot harder for people to take they don't want to accept that because it's you you making it sound so much more than it is and then once you experience it for yourself you're like oh yeah that actually it's harsh for truth but it's not a harsh reality to live to live it out and to hear about it is two different things to say i have to i i'm willing to die for my wife i'm willing to love live for my wife i'm willing to sacrifice for my wife i'm willing to do all these things for her it sounds like you're like oh i'm gonna have to give up so much and then you you live it out and you're like it's not that bad it's actually i'm not giving up so much i'm not you know there's not there's not really any loss when you when you live it right like there isn't loss that if anything you almost feel like you gain right because um further in ephesians chapter 5 closer to verses 30 i think it's 32 and 31 it it says essentially like husbands do all this stuff so your wife can see how much she respects you like that's what you gain and that's that's what men want honestly like men want their wives to respect them yeah and then and to add on that like you know with with 
a healthy relationship towards your spouse, whether you're a wife to your husband or a husband to your wife. You know, if the relationship's healthy, then you want better things for your partner. Like when they gain something good, when something good happens to them, that makes you happy. You shouldn't be envious, right? So in that in that scenario, like it's it's you know, living it out, it's not even like most of the time it, it doesn't really feel like sacrifice because it's yeah, maybe I don't get to do this, but I'm happier because my wife can now do this or I've been able to help my wife achieve that, you know, and, and it's for their better, which because you're one with your wife, it betters you in turn. So it's just it, it's a scenario where nobody loses if you're living a sacrificial, healthy relationship. Join us next week as we continue going through Disciplines of a Godly Man for Chapter 4, Disciplines of Fatherhood.